Hi everybody, it's Mr. Williams, here to talk to you about your first comma rule, using commas with coordinating conjunctions, also known as fanboys. So before we start talking about the comma rule, we should probably know what a conjunction is. A conjunction is a word that connects words or groups of words. Use that first three letters, C-O-N, to remind yourself that conjunctions connect. So when we're talking about coordinating conjunctions, think coordinates. They connect thoughts that are equal or similar. So whether you're thinking about math and you're talking about a graph or like a map, uh, we're talking about coordinates here, coordination. So for the examples below, they ate three burgers and some fries. You need the and there to connect three burgers and fries. We know that both of these things were eaten. You can take the quiz during lunch or after school. Now we have some options here. During lunch or after school, we know the relation. You can't have both. You're picking one of those options. And to use a book we've been reading, John wanted Mr. Pignani's money, but Lorraine did not want to take advantage of a lonely old man. So these are contradicting uh, opinions here. For John, he wants one thing, Lorraine wants the other. The word but tells us that. Now in these examples, the reader can easily compare the two items surrounding the conjunction, but you have to notice that only one of these examples, the last one, actually has a comma. So the thing that you have to figure out here is basically why do we have a comma in that third sentence, but not the first two. So this is how it works. A comma is used before a coordinating conjunction only when it connects two independent clauses or complete thoughts. So we're going to call these basically full sentences, subject and verb, and that counts as a complete thought. So for this example, I wanted to play Zelda, but my friends wanted to play Sonic. I wanted to play Zelda by itself as a complete sentence. My friends wanted to play Sonic is also a complete sentence by itself. But since we're comparing them and putting them together, the word but's put in, and we put a comma between them, and that kind of acts like what the period would normally have done. Just now we have that word that puts the sentence together, so instead of a period, we use a comma. So when we're doing this coordinating conjunction discussion, we're going to make life easier, and we're going to call these coordinating conjunctions fanboys. It's basically an acronym to help you remember that there are seven main coordinating conjunctions. For, and, nor, but, or, yet, so. And when you take those first letters, you get the phrase fanboys. So to color code this for you and give you a graph, going back to our example, I wanted to play Zelda's in red, idea number one, but the fanboys in the middle, and my friends want to play Sonic, that's the idea number two in green. And notice that you just put the comma before the fanboy, and it's as simple as that. It's just making sure that both sides of the sentence around the fanboy, that each one counts as a complete sentence on its own. Now, the only complicated thing here is to choose the right fanboy, because while each of these fanboys follows the same comma rule, they all have their own usages and purposes, so we can't just put a random fanboy out there. We have to think about it. First of all, for your for and your so, that's cause and effect. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a second, but just note that you can't use these two interchangeably. Each one has its own purpose. You also have and and nor. Once again, these show similar ideas, but not necessarily the same word. You can't use them together. And but, or, and yet, those are going to be our contrasting or opposing ideas. So if you're going to use one of these fanboys, there has to be some way to see a difference in the two items that you're comparing. So here are some rules when selecting your fanboy. And as you saw on the last side, they have slightly different meanings, even if they're similar. For instance, but and yet usually imply contrast, but yet typically is used when you have a surprise. So for instance, for but, I like strawberry ice cream, but I like vanilla ice cream better. There's not really any surprise there. If we put yet there, that would imply that liking strawberry ice cream makes it shocking that you like vanilla ice cream. We're not going to use that word. However, in the next sentence, it is warm out, yet it is January. We are kind of surprised when in January, especially in New England, that we have warm weather. So the word yet makes a lot more sense here than but, which is just showing the two things are opposing. The only other opposing idea would be or. So you could say something like, I want strawberry ice cream or I want vanilla ice cream, meaning you don't want both, you just want one or the other. And for for and so, these are cause and effect, but they have different options here. You can't use them in the same order. So looking at these three examples, and I'll just read all three. I found $2, so I bought a candy bar. I bought a candy bar, for I found $2. I bought a candy bar, so I found $2. You can't use the same words for all these sentences. In fact, that third one doesn't necessarily make any sense. So we're going to cross that one out. But you can see that all I did here was flip where the two complete thoughts were. And that's how I decided where to put so or for. So I could still use so or for in most of these examples. It's just a matter of where each complete thought goes. And that's really it for this video. I wanted to keep it nice and short, so thanks for watching. If you have any questions, don't forget that there are some examples in your worksheet. You can do example A, and the answers will be provided for you on my website. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me.
Once again, thanks for watching.